He lived uh, for 99 years, traveled uh, enormously, uh, not only in Europe, but in uh, Latin America, North America, and then the long career, which continued in Seville, as from the beginning of the 20th century till he died in 1971, going through uh, the First World War, the Spanish Civil War, the Second World War, and then, you know, passing away in 1971, and the influences that could have uh, come into play in relation to his work, because let's not forget, he comes out from Gibraltar in 1890 and goes to Rome, so it must have been a real eye-opener for him, no? the whole world of the Italian Renaissance and the Baroque must have been a, a great shock uh, for him. And then the analysis of how he develops, what choices he makes in relation to what is around him, what is around in Italy as well at the time, and then in his move to Paris, the great influence which I think is the French uh, Impressionists, especially Claude Monet. So how do you go about summing up such a long life and such a rich artistic development? I'm not here to sum up. This is, uh, I think we're still in a very preliminary phase because there are, for example, the, the years that he passed in Buenos Aires teaching um, art there. Uh, we don't know what happened in those years. Of course, Buenos Aires as well was not the Buenos Aires now, the same as the Rome of uh, when he arrived was not the Rome now. There was no Versace, Dolce, Dolce Gabbana, you know, let's get this uh, clear. So uh, what's important is to set ourselves the, the, the mindset of the time and then how the whole thing developed and the choices that he made also politically because in Spain, uh, when the Spanish Civil War arrives, uh, it's not an easy time for him. I mean, he literally has to escape quick from Madrid and come back to Gibraltar. And by that time, he's a man of in his uh, mid-60s. So it's not, uh, it's, it's a strange life. That's why I entitled it The Mystery Man, because there are areas, I mean, years in which we know almost nothing for the moment about him. That's something that has to be looked at and research uh, to be done in the Academia de Bellas Artes in Seville, but uh, let's see what the records are. I mean, he was a massive producer of work, not only painting, but uh, ceramics, uh, sculpture, uh, fabrics. So he was really, como dice, humanita. All through his life, right till the, the the very end, you know. What can you tell us about the process of research and uncovering those mysteries? The process, you know, talking with people, but then that's another problem because most of the people who knew him have passed away, and there are very few records of uh, of him here. And it's not only and. Not only be talking about uh, Gustavo Bacarisa, but the family as well is very interesting. But that you'll see if you come to the lecture. <laughs> so Gustavo Bacarisa is a well-known name, obviously in Gibraltar. But how would you describe or define him to someone coming to him for the first time? I think uh, a hard worker. You know, very much uh, of his time, but then sometimes not because, for example. When he's born, Manet is still alive. When he dies, Jackson Pollock has been dead for 20 years. So it's still very difficult. This is a preliminary analysis of the territory. Uh, it's a bit an exploration and of the areas where, because uh, instinct counts for a lot, I mean, from, from my part. I'm a painter as well, so you know, I know why has he done this and not that choices. And sometimes aesthetic choices are political choices. We, we see it around here, even in this exhibition about Audrey Brota. What do people paint? Why do they paint it? And, and how as well. So it's a very preliminary uh, 
analysis. But definitely, I mean, his influence in Seville is huge. And he was very much loved there, and is still much loved there. And I think probably in next year, 24, I think, they'll be doing some big um, kind of celebrations around his work and his life as well there. So it's an interesting bridge, politically at this time, uh, a figure like him.